Well, so, so I mean, the thing's called daily wisdom texts. Do you, um, can you help us with an idea of like, what, what does wisdom mean? What, what is wisdom? Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> I knew you were gonna ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome back to another episode of Parker's Pensies. I'm your host, Parker Sedicase, and this is a podcast where we explore all the deepest ideas in philosophy, theology, nature, and life. I love thinking about cool stuff, so come think with me. Today, I have another very special episode for you guys. Uh, I have with me Samuel Henry. He is the founder of Daily Wisdom Texts. And this dude's awesome. I'm really excited to get into his story and hear about how he got into the tech community and then got out and what he's doing with wisdom in his own life and how, uh, yeah, we're, we're partnering together. So there were, there's a Parker's Pensies uh, playlist for you guys. So you can find that link in the description. We're going to get into more of what that means. Um, but... Before we jump in, um, I want to give you guys some opportunities to support the podcast. So if this is uh, if, if you enjoy this podcast, if you find value in it, if it's your top five, top 10, maybe even top 15, please consider becoming a Patreon patron. That's like the best way to support the podcast. I would love to be doing this full time. I'd love to fly out to Samuel and be sitting down face to face with them. We're getting more into face to face uh, conversations because of some of my patron supporters who have made it rain on me and I have a lot more uh, equipment now, which is cool. But uh, still need a lot. We have a ways to go if I want to do this full time. So please consider becoming a Patreon patron. You can find the link in the description wherever you get in this podcast app. Another way to support the podcast, if you're on YouTube, there is a uh, super thanks button down here. And that's just a way to say thanks. It's above and beyond Patreon. If you want to give a one-time gift, you want to buy me a cup of coffee, buy me a book, whatever it is, uh, everything helps. So it's another way to support the podcast. Another way to support the podcast is by buying some merch from my merch store. You should be able to see that down if we're on YouTube somewhere. If you're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, you find it in the description. But I'm wearing some gear right now. That's my ugly mug. Another one by uh, Chasten Han. Let me just show you this. That's Android Parker. And you guys might be saying, well, Parker, isn't it like super uh, arrogant to wear your face in your shirt? Yeah, it is. But it's not arrogant for you to wear my face on your shirt. So you can you can, you can buy all sorts of fun stuff over there. And uh, I should say for the patrons as well as different levels uh, where you join, you get different perks, shirts and mugs and all that good stuff. So go check that stuff out. And then an another way to support the podcast is by uh, joining up with Daily Wisdom Texts. Uh, you can find the link in the description here. We're going to get into more of what that is. But basically, you're getting texts uh, from from famous philosophers and theologians, all sorts of people who are wise. They come right to your phone every morning. And let me just read one for you. So I got one the other day from uh, St. Augustine, City of God. Augustine's just texting me. It's awesome. This is from my playlist that you can find on Daily Wisdom. So uh, here's from Augustine. Where these truths are concerned, I fear none of the arguments of the academicians. When they say, what if you're an error? If I'm an error, I exist. See, fallow or assume. Someone who doesn't exist surely can't be an error. That's a really famous quote. And a lot of people say, that's where Descartes got his uh, cogito ergo soup from. So you can enjoy daily wisdom text as well. Um, without further ado, let's let's bring in Samuel and let's get talking about like what this partnership looks like. And I want to hear his story. It's it's a good one from what I've heard so far. Samuel, thanks for coming on the hey, podcast, Parker. man. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Um, super excited. And it's been um, great to get to know you. Yeah, man. Um, real quick, let's just say, like, what is uh, the project? What is Daily Wisdom Texts? Yeah, so it's uh, daily text messages of wisdom, so daily wisdom text. So um, basically, I made it for myself, um, super burnt out and just, like, needing to kind of chill and get a little zen um, and um, went back to uh, something that's been there for me many times in the past is... Uh, St. Benedict's rule for monks. So yeah. um, the structure of that is basically there's there's something that the monk is supposed to read every day. Um, it's short. And so I started sending that to myself um, and uh, receiving it as a text message was a great way to kind of force me to to see it every day and have a little moment of mindfulness. And um, yeah, so that's, that's basically how it started. And then um, told some friends about it and they thought it was cool. Um, so added them, added some more authors, um, and then it's kind of just grown from there. Um, so yeah, there's, um, you know, 20 something different authors. You've got folks like, um, Book of Ecclesiastes, Epicurus, um, Lao Tzu, um, 
some sayings of Buddha and, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's some Sufism, there's some Hinduism, there's um, lots of mystics, lots of uh, kind of, uh, yeah, it's, it, I like what you say about playlists. It kind of feels like I'm DJing. Um, you know, <laughs> these, these are books and uh, quotes and authors that have meant a lot to me. Um, and so I'm kind of getting to share them with the world. And yeah. um, that's been awesome. So yeah, you sign up, you get text messages every day. You can um, configure the time of day pretty easily. Um, and that's you're, that's basically it. Um, you're going through um, full books. So like I read the um, Tao Te Ching for the first time mm. by setting it up on daily with some text and it was great. Oh, it's awesome, like, man. wow, I just, I read the whole book and I, I thought about it every day and mm. um, yeah. And so um, excited to um, try this new approach of like partnering with another DJ and um, <laughs> ha helping them, um, you know, share some meaningful thoughts with with their audience and and also yeah. uh, as another source of uh, monetary support for for you to keep doing awesome stuff like this. Dude, totally. I love that. All of that. And I, I really love um, I love the idea of Proverbs because like like you said, you you get this like moment of Zen or you get to chew on it. And that's what Proverbs are so good at. And that's, I've been wrestling with this a lot because I'm studying philosophy uh, in my master's program and just trying to think through like, what is philosophy? And everyone, many people go, well, it's the love of wisdom. And I, I don't know, it just seems like the wisdom tradition has kind of parted from the philosophical tradition. Um, even like the continental folks who might be more like gnomic in what they say, still mm -hmm. it's just different because Proverbs are, are meant to be chewed on. There, right. it's like uh, many of them are like, "Hey, those who have ears, let them hear. Those who have eyes to see, come see it." But you're supposed to like chew on it. It's not like, in right. at least in an analytic philosophy, it's like make all your points very, very clear so they can see where to attack your position because that's good. <laughs> that's what good philosophy is supposed to be. And it's just a little bit different with with uh, uh, wisdom stuff. So I wanted to get in um, to your story a little bit. How how'd you end up? You you mentioned it. You broached it a little bit here, but. How'd you end up uh, making this program? Why why did you feel like you needed daily wisdom uh, texts? Um, yeah, like um, so. I like brief overview background. Um, did philosophy in undergrad, um, and you know thought really hard about doing the PhD and all that, but um, realized I could live without it. And so mm. then, um, if if I couldn't not live without it, then I shouldn't be signing up for that kind of a That's life. That's a good question so. to ask yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, that, that was that was at the University of Chicago, you said, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where, are you, I mean, are you from like uh, the Midwest then? Um, mostly from Maryland. Um, oh, spent snap. a little bit of time um, K to three in um, St. Louis area and okay. then back to Maryland. Um, okay. But yeah, moved out at 18, um, went to U Chicago and just fell mm -hmm. into the life of the mind and yeah. um, had always sort of had philosophical bent but hadn't really studied anything and then just realized kind of came to terms with the fact that like, this was where my interests lie, even though, hmm. you know, they might be um, not the most, uh, you know, responsible or fiscally uh, <laughs> so minded uh, major is kind of like a confession to my parents. when I was like, Hey, I yeah. want to study philosophy. Um, so yeah, did that. Uh, we can get into more later, but like hmm. walked away basically um, didn't really have any sort of plan or, ambitions or whatever eventually got into programming um well did, so you you said like hey i can live without the phd which i think is a really smart uh question to ask yourself and it's a really good move like if you just some people out there are like i just need a phd and i don't know i wrestle with my with that idea all the time mm -hmm. part of me is like i don't think i can live without it so i didn't think i need to go do it but um i think that's a really smart move so you're done with philosophy what are you thinking at that point like was this a waste of your time or you like at least i'm set up no. for thinking clearly or what yeah, no, I was the going through the process of it was um, super valuable, just, you know, personally, spiritually, okay. intellectually, um, and um, yeah, just going into adult life with that kind of um, foundation of um, a worldview and a, um, yeah, just all of that. Um, okay. You can't put a price on. But then, of course, also the the rigor of the analytical thinking mm -hmm. um, has served me very well since then. And um, yeah. once unfortunately, I getting... they they do put a price on it. <laughs> it's very yeah, expensive. Ne <laughs> negative. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you right. go into debt. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, uh, so I mean, then you had to go and get a job that was not in philosophy, right? 
Yeah, so I just, I had like a very basic, like sort of paralegal kind of job. And um, that was, I was, I took a year after doing like the senior thesis and everything to kind of unwind and I was like, okay, I'll probably apply to grad schools and stuff. So I just got a job to get a job. Um, didn't really like go to the career fairs or whatnot. Um, and then once I realized I wasn't going to go down back into academia, I was like, well, I should do something else. So mm. Uh, I didn't, I still didn't really have any plan or goals or skills, um, but got a job at a bigger company. And then that ended up leading to um, learning at a program, which um, then I was like, wow, now I've kind of found a career calling mm. kind of thing. So then went back to UChicago, did a computer science degree. And, oh, I didn't uh, know you went back there. That's cool. Man. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Just couldn't get away. Mm. Um, yeah. And, and then I started to see all the similarities in, um, philosophy and programming like you're in both of them you're holding all these um complex systems of logical thought in your head and you're yeah. uh, you know working on different levels and you're you're taking uh concepts or programming libraries that already exist and you're extending them and putting them to use and so um that ability to like maintain those levels of abstraction and um consequence you know are super useful getting into that world yeah, I've heard. So, I mean, I listen to uh, Lex Friedman a lot, mm -hmm. and he'll talk about that with with some of the programmers and how they're using different logics and stuff like that. And it's it's really cool. Or, uh, they get into yeah. like ontologies when they're uh, sure. I, for, I forgot I forgot the, the name of it, but they they have they a lot of times they hire philosophers to to get in on this stuff. I thought it's so yeah, cool like that there's like metaphysics this... and software design, and, like yeah, <laughs> in both like of them, Occam... worlds. Yeah, yeah, right. and Occam's razor is useful, in both, <laughs> I guess. Like, yeah, sure. <laughs> minimize yeah. complexity <laughs> so uh, so you get into to uh coding and, and programming man are those the same thing if you're, if you're coding are you yeah. programming or... yeah basically okay yeah. okay so you so you get into that um then where do you go from there i think yeah. you ended up at, at amazon yeah. right so from there you know it's time to get a job again and um <laughs> um sort of starting off in this career um going somewhere like in amazon or google you know i mm -hmm. knew I would learn a lot more and get a lot of experience and it looked, you know, pretty safe on the resume and all that. Sure. So, um, moved to Seattle, did that. And then it just kind of was like a rocket ship up of like growing and building and then leading teams and then leading wow. teams of teams and all this stuff that was just, um, very like invigorating and exciting, but, uh, you know, kind of ran myself into the ground, um, yeah. pretty hard and, for a long time. <laughs> well, Sam, um, I would I would assume as an outsider that those jobs would be like highly sought after and be like tough to get. Is, is that is that the case or? Yeah, yeah. So that's a, like, that's a pretty that's a huge thing that they hired you then. Yeah, it was amazing. Like, uh, you know, I went went from like not really knowing anything to being able to get that job and like, yeah, that that degree program at at u chicago just was phenomenal in like both theoretical and practical stuff that set me up okay. to get in the door okay and then once i was in the door just like sort of innate leadership qualities in me just kind of jived um with the culture and yeah just, yeah so it went i mean it went really well but then you're feeling run down burned out like what yeah, just super burnt out. It was like, how do I get out of this? Like, mm. And then it'd be like, oh, there's another project or team that needs to be dealt with. And then it's all right, another year or two goes by and I'm even deeper down in the hole. <laughs> yeah. So finally, um, in 2020, um, took some time off, went and just like stared at the desert for a while. That was when I first um, started like uh, getting the Benedict texting me again and then yeah. uh, was able to finally leave and then uh yeah 2021 was just kind of trying to um just calm my mind a bit and all that and i started getting back into reading like um mysticism and you know um early um asceticism and some hmm. minimalist poetry and like al ghazali's like sufist stuff and sure. it was just like i'm chilling and then um Kind of recovered enough and was like getting curious about like uh adding more authors into the daily wisdom text and telling more people about it and then mm. um around like december kind of finally had the energy where i was like wow i'm working on this like all the time and like i'm excited about that and like the process of creating it like 
was a good forcing function for me to continue engaging with different wisdom yeah. traditions and like go beyond my like primarily Western um, education. Like, you know, um, there's a lot out there that's not just, it's true, you know, and uh, yeah. Must... Were you still were you still working at Amazon while you were making this? Were you still on your time no. off? Okay. Um, yeah. So um, left and then yeah, got it going. Okay. So in a, like a very you... basic way that was like not meant to even. I didn't even like tell friends for a while. It was just something for me. And then yeah, I told a friend and they were like, well, "That's awesome." Had me. You know? okay. That is pretty cool, man, because it's got like this like pure uh, this pure motive behind it, um, and. Y- because it's not like, hey, this is my escape hatch where I'm going to make a bunch of money out of it. It's like, no, I'm just doing this. I'm just trying to survive. I'm just trying to yeah. reset and re, you know, reengage and get some wisdom. If you're, if someone does that to make money, that's cool too. I'm a capitalist man. I like money. Right. Um, but, but it's even better when it kind of grows as like an organic thing. I think. Yeah, yeah, and it, you know, basically runs itself, and you mm-hmm. know, people sign up. There's a trial some convert but it's pretty much yeah just that's sweet well yeah. so sammy you said you took some time to stare at the desert do you mean that literally <laughs> like did you actually yeah. go out and start? Okay. yeah yeah so uh you know i don't have like any family or kids or anything so um maybe june of 2020 i bought a car and drove east to hang out with my parents and quarantine with them and mm-hmm. like um just to try to make the most of that time that I could um, be spending with them since I couldn't really be doing anything else and didn't need to be physically in Seattle. So mm-hmm. had a car and then I, um, in the fall, decided to take that kind of sabbatical and like drove out to New Mexico and Arizona and Whoa. just basically like stared at the desert for a couple of months. And, well, dude, uh, why'd you pick that? Why didn't you go to like a tropical place? Like what about the well, desert did it for you? Um, the desert... Yeah, um, I spent a little bit of time in Morocco and fell in love with the desert and just like the vastness of it and like the fact that like there are, you know, like ancient shark bones and fish and stuff like in the desert yeah, is just totally. mind blowing in the like geological time scale and all of that is just, you know, overwhelming and quieting and sublime. Um, and so, yeah, I was drawn to that. I did then go to Florida for a little bit and stare at the beach at the okay. ocean for a bit. <laughs> That's still uh, good. So I got yeah. a little bit of that in on the way back. Um, but yeah. Well, that's that's really cool because I, I'm uh, I'm currently reading through Dune and uh, I've included some of those in the uh, play in my playlist, whatever. Uh, yeah. Parker's Proverbs. And just like last night or two nights ago, uh, are you familiar with Dune at all, Samuel? Think? Yeah, I haven't read the book, but I'm okay. vaguely aware of the concepts, and I I saw the recent movie. Oh, uh, nice. Okay. Yeah, uh, Frank Herbert is just a legend. Like he he he's on par. Like mm, I don't want to see he's on par with Tolkien, but they both do the same thing where they they make up their own proverbs and then they interject them into the into the story. And I don't know. Most times you're like you just read it and you're like, oh, okay, so that that character is wise. But if you sit and chew on that proverb, you're like, wait, where did that come from? What do you right? He just interject. So. He was he was talking about uh, last night or two nights ago or something. I was reading Leto too that this emperor is saying uh, there's something about the desert that's like spiritual. There's something oh, about yeah. the desert that like draws it out of you. And then you think about the desert fathers. You think about like right. the spiritualists and people in the desert. And I I haven't quite had that experience actually being there, but I know like pontificating in my own mind. I'm like yes, the desert. Mm. But I'm like I wonder if I'd be like that if I went to Arizona right now. You know I I need to actually have that experience myself. I think. But you're saying it, it, it works well, for you. Doing it, going to Arizona in August may not be the most advisable. <laughs> you, okay. you might, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe yeah. a little practical yeah. wisdom too. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I I think about I think about the year 2020 and all the ramifications that come from that. And I think you know we look 50 years down the line from now, and we look back at 2020, and I think we're going to see a lot of ripples coming from that. You know, right. like just little things. Maybe you and I be, explode and we become huge, whatever. And we say, you know, 2020, that's when I started my podcast, August, 2020. Um, right. Maybe not. Right. But, but a bunch of these little micro little movements, all these little things like you and me and a lot of other people just take having some little break, even though it was in a terrible situation being like, I don't want to do, I want to do something else. I want to do, I need to do something else. 
And I, I know a lot of people that's happened with, and uh, I'm just thinking about the ripple effects from that one year and all the terrible stuff, but there's also good stuff and breaks and changes. And it's a crazy year, man. Yeah. 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 I was very fortunate to like be able to, um, stay home and like, even on the drive, like I wouldn't even go into like a rest stop. I'd like go on the side of the road and take a leak. Just huh. like, you know, I was able to, I was fortunate to be able to be super, super, um, removed from exposure and had the time with my parents that I never would have done, um, you know, at this phase of their lives and like all that super, super, um, incredible for me to have been able to do. Um, totally. Yeah. So, so fast forwarding now to today, um, is this, is this the, is this the full-time gig? Like is daily wisdom text? Is that, is that what you're, you're diving in, uh, head on with? Um, it's like, it's nice. Like I can basically cover the costs, like without it costing too much right now, like, um, with like, enough people convert to pay and there's not a lot of overhead and I can build it also like I don't have the like you know uh gun to my head of like full-on startup mode um like 24 7 so like it's full-time like it's where I spend most of my like working time and I'll have phases where it's you know a lot more than others but like um I have also been doing some like um, short term like consulting programming oh, stuff, okay. which is nice. Um, yeah, is that, is that still is that something you still like? I'm assuming you you enjoyed programming. Just yeah. be, you know, like you you talked about how it's it was similar to uh, there's a lot of carryover from philosophy, and then you you got burned out. But is that something that you're able to then like uh, enjoy again? Like, would you it, continue for doing sure. that? Yeah. Yeah. Working on this project is really like reconnecting me back with like the basics of the fun of it. Like, nice, man. Um, Cause like I was in meetings all day by the time, you know, halfway through Amazon. So I wasn't really writing much code and that yeah. was what I wanted to be doing. But, um, and like just the code you have to write it like an Amazon, like cloud thing that's gotta be all secure and up all the time. Uh-huh. It's super different than like working on this. So it's okay. back to the basics of like, uh, not that it's not secure or whatnot, but like <laughs> the yeah. the rigor and everything, you can move a lot faster. It's a lot more fun. And so, okay. yeah, I've definitely like been enjoying that. Uh, so I, I don't know a ton about coding, but I, I know like there's different platforms and stuff. Like, um, do you have a favorite? Like, are you like, what is it? Apple Pie? Apple Pie is I think it's like super like base level. And then there's like eight, like there's a bunch of different things. What do you, what do you use? Python yeah, or what? I mean, it, it depends on what you're trying to do. So sometimes okay. you want to, have something that's a little more loosey goosey and fast to work in. Other times you want something that's a little more structured and um, like not going to break as easily. Um, so it really depends on what you're trying to do and um, then it, just what you're familiar with. So like, oh yeah, I guess that's a big part. So so I mean, what do you what do you like? Are there like four of them that you that you use or? Yeah, so um, like pretty much all of Daily Wisdom text is written in Ruby, and that's like okay. sort of like a Python, like very. Um, like just kind of simple and smooth and um like yeah fun and then you know when you're doing something more enterprise like java is good for that like everyone knows that it's got Mm. you know know, great safety and um, stuff like that but then there's languages that also just kind of like change your paradigms of thinking and like those are those are fun uh to do like as almost like a thought experiment or yeah uh ritual you know <laughs> but, yeah, uh, totally. you might not use them day to day yeah i i uh I'm, I'm interested in it just just to think about it like i i don't think i want to code or anything maybe it'd be easier to do but i have a i'm a, with the podcast i'm acquiring more and more friends which is awesome and they're like hey i can do this for you i'm like sick let's do that instead of me having to take the next you know 40 hours to try and for learn sure. something so that's been really cool but i, I am definitely interested in just like I like people and I like thinking like, why would someone like Ruby instead of job, like the, just the personality mm-hmm. traits that come through and, and other people like, well, it's easier. Well, this one's more fun or this one lets me be more creative. And it's just, yeah, uh, it's cool, man. It's a whole like weird abstract world, but it is. I love abstract stuff. It's so that. Yeah. 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 I, I kind of say it's a lot like um, philosophy, except like it either, it either works or it doesn't like philosophy, like (laughs) anything where you can know if it actually works or not, like, isn't really worth 
like philosophizing about. <laughs> yeah, that's true. If it's that <laughs> but, simple every now and then. Right. But then you're a famous person, whoever everyone reads. Yeah. But it's still not, you don't really know if it's right or wrong. Like it doesn't yeah, yeah. like work or not work. It's just like, uh, it's different. Um, yeah. You could, if you produce, I guess if you produce like a reductio ad absurdum, you reduce someone's position to absurdity and it's like, okay, there we go. Now we got one. But it's like, well, then you go in for like multi-valued logics and all stuff like that. And like, well, maybe we can have contradictions. Like, dang it. I just don't do that to me. You know, we finally got some somewhere. Yeah. Um, so I want to talk about like uh, the progression. So so you you say, look, I need to reset. I'm going to make this program for myself. It's going to send yeah. me texts. That's going to be wisdom stuff. How do you decide uh, what to start uploading? Like, like who'd you who? Why did you pick from the sources you originally picked from? Yeah. So, um, first one was Benedict and, um, yeah. that one's just been kind of, a, a crutch or something in some, you know, difficult times in my life. Like, yeah. uh, uh, early after a very like intense loss and, um, all of that, I, I mm -hmm. went to the reading the Benedict every day and, mm -hmm. um, so that one, um, and the format being like, there's a reading for every day is just perfect yeah. for what I was trying to do. So that was the yeah. first one. Well, Sam, and can, then I, it, can I ask you about that? Like, why, why, um, why St. Benedict's rule for monks? Like, did you grow up Catholic or something? Or, or, or how did um, you... Technically, I, I grew up Catholic. Um, Most people do. <laughs> yeah, in the state, <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. Um, but really, so um, this gets back into undergrad. So um, I took a course. I think it was my senior year on early Christian monasticism. And okay. so, um, you know, we were reading about, you know, Anthony and, um, Christus Dumb and, um, yeah. you know, eventually getting into like Evagrius and, um, then, you know, uh, Benedict and, um, stuff like that. And so, mm -hmm. um, that was, um, uh, very like resonating with me like i sort of um in the like more philosophy coursework and research stuff i was very much running up against um mysticism and mm. ineffable and um negative theology and all yeah, of totally. that sort of stuff um where like um yeah so they just kind of like intersected really nicely as almost like a culmination of um my my studies and my mm -hmm. work like um and that just kind of peace and you know like uh fleeing the world and yeah um, all that good stuff um, dude this is this is huge so like i just have to point this out for the audience that like you took some stuff you learned in your philosophy undergrad and it served you later in your life sure. uh when you had hard times like so many people are like, well, you know, what's the difference between a philosophy major and a, and a pizza? Like you can't feed a family with a philosophy. <laughs> like, dude, no, it actually does right. work. It actually helps you live a better life. Not everyone, but you can use the tools you learned in your philosophy, even in your undergrad philosophy. Yeah. To, to have a better life. That's awesome. Yeah. And like to your question of like, what is philosophy? Like, you know, there's there's no one answer. But like it's for me been uh, always kind of like a, a medication, you know, and hmm. um, it, early you know teenage getting like you know so starting off catholic and then kind of like studying physics and uh you know just falling into materialism and mm. just being like wow like nothing matters like it's all just you know you know molecules or forces or yeah. wavelengths or everything whatever. Matter. yeah nothing yeah matter. and then i'm like matter. Yeah. yeah exactly so then you know fell into deep nihilism and kind of like eventually sort of philosophized my way out of that with like mm. okay if nothing matters then like well, you, you can either kill yourself or not. If you do, yeah. then that's that. If you don't, then like it also doesn't matter. And then like now that you're choosing life instead, you make up the rules. And um, so that was sort of like early philosophical leanings in me um, and kind of, yeah, as like a salve on the on the soul. Um, that's awesome, man. That's like it's like serious for you. It's like real. Like you've lived through it, and you have like these ideas have affected your life. I love that. I, yeah. so, sometimes it's just a game, and whatever, man. If that's if that's you, you can do that too. But it's just cool. Like it's it's shaped your life. These ideas. Yeah, right? and then it's amazing to come back to it and to yeah. have, um, like you said, like had that early experience that still, 
keeping my brain occupied yeah. and uh you know hopefully a little healthier yeah well so so you got into like saint benedict you got into the desert fathers which which makes sense like you you especially you had the senior class and then like those are naturally yeah. connected so how'd you end up getting into um more eastern we had a we had a call uh like a month or month and a half ago and you were you were naming some folks that i had just never even heard of and it's like and on this process you're yeah. becoming like an expert in wisdom literature which is so cool but how'd you ever like start branching out into non-western yeah how did i i guess one of the first like recent ones was um lao tzu i was like you know what are some heavy hitters like hmm. um and just configured that as a reading and started getting it every day and i'm like um this is weird like i feel like a lot of this is familiar familiar to me in like other things i've read or thought and then just being like okay uh, and then like i you know we all in the west have sort of like a, a shallow basic understanding of like you know buddhism and yeah you know zen and whatnot and so that and then we study philosophy and we realize like most of the early stuff was like you know borrowed from either egypt or like the indus valley <laughs> and then it's mm -hmm. like okay so yeah um that can start to like overlap and make sense so um then started getting into some of that and like um i got i started like doing like vegetarian and then veganism and then i'm learning about like oh there's like Jains who like won't even eat like a root vegetable which kills mm -hmm. them and they're sweeping away and so like those sorts of things also drew me over into that okay. space yeah um that's awesome man. yeah so like still still you know very early in my like delving but um a couple of different ones um as authors and i'm, I'm reading them that way and yeah um yeah just forcing myself to um uh, expand more in you know geographically and um spiritually and um gender wise and all of that that's awesome Have, do you ever come across um proverbs that you disagree with that you think like hey this is still good to chew on but i actually don't know that it's it's uh like in accord with with wisdom for sure yeah okay um yeah um there's one that's like early in the um principal doctrines of epicurus i think where he says like pain is not long lasting like any any pain mm. will like and i'm like dude that's really nice that like that was your experience but yeah. like do you know anyone with chronic pain like mm. or that's like you know actually physically being tortured and it's like uh bro like we're gonna have to <laughs> caveat that one a little um yeah. and then you know there's those sort of like basic ones but then just to like continue on the epicurean piece like um in like a more serious way there's the proverbs and wisdom that are like we must free ourselves from the prison of everyday affairs and politics and it's like mm -hmm. that is very relieving when you're like overwhelmed with the world and seeing like you know the mundane and the like you know uh, just like insanity out there like yeah retreating is really nice but like that's also like a super privileged thing to be able to do to go and sit in your garden and like eat figs and talk yeah. about like friendship like and it might not again, be prudent like, when the wolf's at the door right or something like, like yeah 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 right like wolf's at the door or like wolf is at other people's doors and like you yeah. know should we just be retreating from the world or trying mm. to actually um help or fight in whatever way we can and so like yeah uh, and yeah there's there's always these contradictions having the different ones against each other like uh helps you kind of wrestle with them in your own head and yeah see uh, I've, I've, i found that i found that when i uh so i got this oxford dictionary of proverbs and i part of it feels like che like cheating but a lot of them they're, they're not from books or they were from like the 1400 or something but it's like not a book i'm ever going to read so i, I try to like <laughs> you, assuage my, you never my, know <laughs> yeah 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 that's right I try to like assuage my my guilt on that because I like to I like to find it myself. If I if I like go out and harvest it myself, it feels really good. 
Um, but but I grabbed this this book of Proverbs and I'm like, oh man, there's so many that I just don't I don't agree with. I don't like that. I don't think that that actually is wisdom. But even in chewing on it, I have to think like, why don't I agree with that? And it's been yeah. such a good process to be like, okay, well, and, and then to, to also think that Proverbs aren't a one size fit all. It's uh, it's it takes right. wisdom to actually use them. And so there's this kind of like chicken and egg thing where it's like, how do you even get started on wisdom? And the, the you know, Proverbs talks, the, the book of Proverbs in the Bible at one part says, uh, Proverbs 1, 7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. <laughs> um, and so you go, okay, so I'm, I'm fearing the Lord. Like, it's not just being afraid, but it's like fearing and reverencing him and saying like, if, if he created this world, then uh, looking at the way that he created and what he ascribes to you will help you live along the grain of reality. But then I think it's nine Proverbs nine ten says the beginning of wisdom is this get wisdom. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that is actually wise. just go get it. And you're like, wait, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> go be make, if you want to be wise, you have to live your whole life. Like go and get it. It's worth more than gold. It's worth more than jewelry. It's more, worth more than like fancy uh, uh, perfumes. Go and get wisdom and like treat it like it's your sister. Treat it like, like it's your neighbor. Treat it like, like it's right next to you. Wisdom will guide me. And I, if I don't live by wisdom, it doesn't matter how much riches I have. Mm -hmm. So I, I love, uh, I love like, like your, your daily wisdom text. It's someone texting you some, some great thinker saying like, here's, here's a bit of wisdom. Here's a bit of wisdom. Here's a, and you have to chew on it yourself to make it your mm -hmm. own, to apply it to your life. So it's not just a one size fits all. You're outmoding your thought. No, no, Now you have to go apply this to your life. I love that. Yeah. And, it, um, yeah so two things i guess one like um this is something that makes me really excited about having like partnering with you of like having mm -hmm. another dj is that yeah. like i've selected all the ones that are there currently and like i'm often drawn to things that are sort of saying the same thing over and mm -hmm. over or of like um you know like sort of like ecclesiastes philosophy but like yeah in different you know um modes um, and so like for myself, like I can box myself into a corner and be just sort of like, um, like confirmation biasing of mm. like, just like stewing on these same sort of, um, concepts. Um, yeah. and it, you know, it's nice to then like bring another perspective in and like, have you be like, okay, what about these? So then I could like switch it over to your ears and be like, all right, what if I kind of, and you know focusing on on these these and there'll be overlap of course but like yeah totally i'm excited to like get to um have like almost an experience of another person's kind of yeah. um path um totally and then the second thing dude it's crazy that you brought up the uh fear of god is the beginning of wisdom um yeah. when i was like thinking uh, a little bit before this about like what we might get into and what i might want to like talk to you about and ask you about uh, mm -hmm. is is that very thing um so like and like ecclesiastes i mentioned is like pretty much if i had to say like this is my philosophy it's basically like in there and um but the one of the parts that like i can never really understand is that um the fear of god is gaining wisdom and like mm -hmm. that's like in the end of the book like yeah it's all like what you're supposed to be doing and like for me like I can't comprehend like what God is like that. Just bracketing that like problem, mm -hmm. uh -huh. we'll set that aside. Like, yeah. But then, like, what is it that like the fear of God? Um, why is that so important in that? Mm -hmm. Do you have what are your thoughts on on that uh, within Proverbs and Ecclesiastes? Yeah, man, Ecclesiastes is such a good one. Um, and I I don't think I don't think a lot of Christians read Ecclesi Ecclesiastes. Uh, first of all, I just don't think they read it. And they're like, yeah, if you want to get depressed, go ahead and read that. But I, I don't think that they wrestle with the there's discontinuity in there where it's like the, the whole thing is about life under the sun and um, everything's meaningless. And there's just the the rapid or the continual change of seasons. And like there's a time for everything. And, and that's kind of nice. And you might read that at a funeral. There's a time to die. And this was kind of. But like the rest of the Bible says that death is not a good thing. It's the final enemy. And so it's like it's it's not just a, you know, it was his time to go. It's like, no, we hate this. We hate death. What what are you talking about? And so I, there's this um, Bible uh, commentator, Tremper Longman, who's a really good one, who, who who writes really good commentaries on the wisdom literature, Psalms, uh, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. 
And he's got this interpretation of Ecclesiastes that it is a father teaching his son about the best worldly wisdom there is, but saying, look, at the end of the day, so so you get all the way to the end and it says, you know, fear God, keep his commandments. And you're like, wait, what? How did that fit? And so Tremper Longman is like, you know, it's it's a father teaching um, probably not King Solomon, but maybe like <laughs> a philosopher from the East or something saying, here's here's what life is. And he goes, look, all has been considered, fear God and keep his commandments. And so he's saying, look, this is like, it could be, this is the best the world has to offer, but it's not uh, enough. This is, or, or it could be, this is life under the sun without God. If there were no God, okay. then everything would be meaningless. Um, and so it, it could be him like putting the philosopher of Ecclesiastes uh, on blast and being like, uh, don't, don't, don't go this route or look what happens if you go this route without God, everything is meaningless. Um, and, and Ecclesiastes means like preacher. So mm -hmm. it's hard to say, is the preacher the one, oh, are so there you, multiple voices going on? Are right. there three so voices like the, or there the two multiple, voices? Yeah. Multiple author thing. So then maybe it's like you're saying, uh, the philosopher is giving all this and then the like, uh, the father figure, the father okay. figure then yeah. is commenting on that and saying like, just do this. Yeah. Or he could be, you know, it's hard to say, like, is he giving a lesson and saying this, this, these are true facts, but, um, to sum it up, fear God and keep his commandments. You know, could it, could he be saying that? Could he be putting those two in contrast with each other? Uh, and so it's, it's just a tricky mm -hmm. thing when it comes to, and I think that's good. It's good to wrestle with that. It's like, I, it's, I don't know. It's like a divine uh, uh, conundrum. Like, well, how, how are we going to interpret this? Because we don't have the final key on it that says here is exact. There's three, okay. there's three authors here. There's three voices. There's two voices. When it comes to like fearing the fear of God, um, that that comes up that that mm -hmm. again and again in the wisdom literature, the, the beginning of wisdom, knowledge, understanding is fearing God. And I think it is, like I said earlier, it's, like if if God exists and has a purpose for our lives, then that's the one you need to go to first if you're going to be wise. You, like, does he want us to live a certain way? Okay, I need to figure out what that way is. Have I done anything to wrong him? Well, I don't know. Like, what does he say? What What does it mean? What What am I? If 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 there is a God and if I'm made in His image, I'm supposed to represent Him. Have I been doing that well? If If that's my purpose, should I be doing this to represent Him? Uh, you know, what, how should I be loving other people? Mm -hmm. Um, should I treat people differently than animals? Should I treat my neighbor? Like, what do I do here? So it all is not like contingent on if, if there's a God, then we better consult him in order to find out. Yeah. Uh, how to a live. God that takes an interest in the world. That, well, and that's the, that's, that's like, one of the questions, right? Does he care? Does he care at all? Maybe he's right. just this deistic God who set things in motion and it's like, whatever, or maybe right. he's like. Yeah. And so, so why fear that God? Right. So you figure like that's the, that's why I think the God question is such a huge deal. Is there a God? And if there is, does he care? And is he a he? <laughs> like, is it even a, a something that I can address as a person? There we go. Hello. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's no, pretty no funny. Like right at the moment of like, why fear that God? It, like, <laughs> it's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, going to make something. That's good. Um, so, so I think the, the last thing I, I said uh, before you froze was like, yeah, if, if there is a God, um, yeah, why, why fear him? And, and so that, that's why like the, the God question is at the center of, uh, of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. If there is no God, then that'll shape how we live as well. Um, but you right. know the Bible. It, the Bible presupposes that there is a God, and that He's the one who is uh, shaping and, and molding the the book itself. I see. So it's starting from the premise: there is this God who takes an interest in human affairs and yeah. has, uh, you know, kind of uh, priorities, um, and yeah. uh, that if if you're starting within that, then like uh yeah that that lord has shown reason uh to be feared and respective respected and honored and these commandments are uh maybe that um part about like ways to live and what uh values of different yeah sorts. well and and proverbs is a fun is a really fun one because um not a lot of them are like commands there mm -hmm. it, it's not like the same thing as like deuteronomy or something where it's like thou shalt not this is how thou shalt live and some of those commands you're like wait mm, 
what, what's up with the shellfish? And some people will go, well, it's a dietary restriction because they weren't, they didn't understand food loss or uh, food back then and microbiome and all that mm -hmm. stuff. It's like, well, he could have just told them that though. He could have said, Hey, there's this thing that pigs have <laughs> if you don't cook them well enough. Right. So it, it could be arbitrary where he's like, are you going to follow me or not? Like I'm giving you this principle. If you want to mm -hmm. live in my economy, if you want to live, you're going to do what I say. And if I said, stand on your head first thing in the morning, are you going to do that? Or are you going to say, this is arbitrary and I understand it. So it could mm -hmm. be that, but you know, set that aside. That's Deuteronomy. That's, that's different. Proverbs is like, if you want to be wise, you will do these things. Avoid the, one of the biggest one is like avoiding uh, the adulteress. It's like, if you go and sleep with another man's wife, uh, your, your life is going to be really bad. Don't right. do that. Right. You, you, you can pay him all the money in the world, but uh, the, the jilted uh, husband is going to want to kill you. You can't give him money. You can't, he wants revenge. Don't do it. Yeah. You're going to introduce a lot of uh, like anxiety and stress right. in your life. It's not worth it. Yeah. Right. So like be, be wise, my son. And so uh, it's cool. The book of Proverbs is like this book from King Solomon to his sons. And probably he saw his sons were not that wise and needed wisdom, but also he had, he had just accumulated right. just tons and tons of wisdom. And it's kind of cool, man, because it's a little bit of like what you're doing. Like he's exactly, he, yeah, yeah, he, totally. he collated this thing for his sons to be wise. And you're collating this thing for, for others to be wise here. It's like sending mm -hmm. it out. It's awesome, man. Yeah. And like, you know, that was like a, there was like a collecting process and conversation within the, you know, um, the world back then um, into the Near East and into Egypt. And like yeah. um, some of that is like, you know, there's all the great parallels and um, the sharing with the cultures in, in the Levant and just like um, yeah. some of them were probably also kind of ones that um, may have been handed from one person to another. Totally. Um, and um, yeah, it's really fun to be well, sort of back in. Yeah. One, one of the really cool things about, about, setting off on like a project you get to a certain point where like you reverse the polarity and so things just start coming to you mm -hmm. so like with with you like as you grow people will be like hey have you heard of this guy he's yeah. got some really good let me send you some of this stuff and now it's like oh the the effort of collecting is now reversed and now people are like take this take this take this and it happens with my podcast where now people yeah. will send me their books and they're like here read this book i'm like this is awesome man i used to have to buy these books and now like they're coming to me and i get to it's just so cool. And that's yeah. what like happened with King Solomon. Queen Sheba comes to him, like mm. uh, the Queen of Sheba, like they're all bringing stuff to him. And, and it's just a really cool process, which I'm, I'm sure is, is happening to you and will happen even more as you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's been awesome. Like something I wasn't thinking about getting, you know, joy from this project, um, but then has turned into just incredible, um, has been connecting with people on Twitter. Like yeah. um, there's people who are like, well, I'm in like, you know, sort of daily conversations of like, they'll post something and tag me and I'll post something and tag them. Or um, I reconnected with someone who taught one of my classes in undergrad. No way. Um, it was like, yeah, it was, it was amazing. Um, I think I forget how we figured that out, but um, yeah, they taught like an entire course on Schleiermacher's um, hmm. on religion. And it was like an amazing experience. And I'm like, wow, this is that. Uh, person who was like a postdoc at the time and now yeah. we were talking so uh, yeah so that, cool. that communal thing has been great and um excited to like help kind of that community keep growing through you know you sharing stuff and other yeah. people sharing stuff and like you said i can tap into that too totally man well so so i mean the thing's called daily wisdom texts do you um can you help us with an idea of like what what does wisdom mean what what is wisdom yeah um right <laughs> i knew you're gonna ask me that <laughs> yeah so for me i guess like it's just like almost going back to that sort of like curative thing of like these are just like little thoughts um where like they can provide some solace or they can um like yeah just help you kind of make sense of hmm. existence and um kind of um like a painkiller or like a um a vitamin or something hmm. to um 
just help you get through life um, yeah. in, you know, all the different moral, spiritual uh, real ways in which um, that is a, uh, a, you know, at times painful and at times magical um, mm. experience. And so the wisdom for me is just like those sort of accumulated poetic uh, expressions that, yeah. Um, yeah, kind of tap into that ineffable or uh, provide some kind of like restorative um, quality in you. Hmm. I like that. That is, it's funny you, you mentioned dif uh, our different playlists and how we think differently. And that, that would seem to me like that was like a desert father type answer. I like that. It's like talking about, you know, the necessity of like helping you live and experience uh, emotion and stuff like that. And for me, I'm like, well, you know, no wisdom is like the proper application of knowledge. You're like, okay, great. Mm -hmm. Well now apply that to my life. It's like, okay, okay. So it's just cool. Like the way we, we do think differently. So, so I would think wisdom is the, the proper application of knowledge. Um, mm -hmm. You, you can know something you can know, um, not to answer a fool according to his folly, lest you be like him yourself. You can know that, but you, there's also, a, 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 this is from the book of Proverbs, mm -hmm. um, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. And so there's these two contradictory Proverbs right next to each other. And you're like, wait, what am I, what do I do? And like, you need wisdom to know, is this mm -hmm. a fool that needs to be uh, uh, addressed that needs, because he's leading others astray or because, um, you know, he's about to fall in the pit himself. Or is this someone mm -hmm. who's just like poking at you on Twitter, who's like you're trying to come at you and you're like, no, look, if I if I feed the troll, it's only going to get right. worse for me. Don't feed the troll. And it's like you, you need to you, have, you need to have wisdom in order to do that. So you can have the knowledge of both of those. I think both of those are true. But now I need wisdom to properly apply that knowledge in different circumstances. And then I, I like the way that you said it, because now we can apply it to our lives for, you know, um, emotional uh, salve like. Hey, I'm going through something right now. I need some wisdom, and that's something I don't, I don't think of as much. Like about helping me through emotional droughts or uh, uh, distraught. Like that, mm -hmm. that stuff's good. I need to to have more of that realm or aspect of wisdom in my life. Yeah, and just seeing that other people have felt the same way. Just oh, you know, totally. Whether it's literature, or music, or art, you know, mm. visual art or um, wisdom literature. There's there's some solace just in that knowing that you're you're not alone kind of and yeah um yeah there there's um there's a couple like uh someone told me like hey you should make up your own proverbs i'm like mm, that's really <laughs> pretentious bro like i can't do that <laughs> but there's uh there's one that gives me so much solace in the way that you were talking about and it's just like it's just a really simple statement people are dumb and they and mm -hmm. they say stupid stuff and it's not really like anything profound, but it helps me so much when uh, my, my wife and I are, are struggling with infertility right now. And we got it. We, we know that the problem is and, you know, we got to change uh, diets and, and all this different type of stuff. But people will say really insensitive stuff all the time. Or if they're pregnant, they'll send us like a picture of mm -hmm. their ultrasound. It's like, dude, F off. Like, are you serious right now? Don't send me that. You can tell me, but I don't you know, don't send me that. But when I'm like so tempted to just go off on them and be like, how dare you? You should have known, blah, blah, blah. I just go like, hey, people are dumb. People are you dumb. Know? People are dumb. They say stupid crap. Yeah. Like, that's okay. Like, I'm dumb. I've done plenty of that. So right. people people are dumb. You know, and they like, didn't they didn't mean to hurt you. Right. Um, and if they did, then like you should. Maybe you should care even less what they say. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> man. Exactly. Oh, you want you wanted to hurt me. Like, well, the, don't let them. Don't let them hurt you because then they win. I don't want them to win, especially yeah, if they're yeah. trying to be a, a douche like that. Whatever, man. Like, or there's, like there's, yeah. Yeah. It's sort of like, uh, you know, there but by the grace of God, you know, go, there go I. Like, yeah. Right. Like, if, if they had had that kind of um, fertility or um, miscarriage or yeah. loss of a child, then they would be way more sensitive about that with right. you. And right. like, so it's kind of like, man, like, God bless their innocence. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of being like, I wish you felt this pain being like, no, dude, I'm glad they didn't have to like, uh, they didn't have to. And yeah. they probably will someday. And, uh, 
I think that's another part of the wisdom is like, hey, look, it comes for us all. Like, right. uh, you know, some people have a terrible life their like whole childhood and then they rise from that and they and they grow and stuff. And other people, it hits them all at once, but it's coming for everybody. Like the, mm -hmm. the pain, the suffering, it comes like I think that's why having a lot of these gnomic statements, uh, proverbs, having like storing up wisdom in your heart, in your mind, it helps you. And man, I, so I'm a Christian. I think it's the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. brings it like to mind in these circumstances, but like memorizing um if you have them in there, you can work with them. So uh, a yeah. situation comes up and it and you, it can help you and you go, hey, look, they. I remember this. Yeah, uh, you know, Pascal said this was going to happen, and here we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've I've definitely thought about that. Like I've like going back to like the like grief thing. Like I felt like I had been sort of preparing myself, mm -hmm. my you know whole life to deal with such a loss, and. Um, I don't know that it really made any difference when it happened. Like when the, when the, you know, rubber meets the road, it's like, yeah. oof. but maybe, maybe it would have been way worse harder yeah, without sure. that or um, hard to know or yeah. 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 I, I, I definitely like the solace of, of saying someone else has experienced this or there, man, I don't know what it is. There's just something when you, when you read a, a, a proverb, when you read a wise quote, that just rings true and you're just like mm, that's good i want to just chew on that i need to think about that more it's just good i don't it makes you want to go to the beach it makes you want to go to the desert it makes you want to go somewhere and just sit in that pose and just like chew on that I'm like that's really wise that's good yeah and and like take you like a little away from the day-to-day -day a bit and mm -hmm. be like oh there there are all these sort of bigger thoughts that uh i ponder and yeah let me just have a moment of that before getting back to the rat race or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And then carrying hopefully some of that, you know, quietude with you into totally your day -to -day. And, and blessing everyone you're around, you know, right. acting, acting well. Uh, yeah. So I, uh, like Marcus Aurelius, uh, people call him a stoic and whether that's true or not, it's like this historical debate yeah. and all this crap, but he does talk about the logos and living accord in accord with the logos. And he was kind of a, Again, I don't know, but it seems like he's kind of a determinist when it comes yep. to the logos. Um, but he did say, like, in living wisely, like, I'm living in accord with this universal principle or logos or whatever. Um, as a Christian, I'm like, yeah, I, I believe John 1 says the logos is not just this impersonal thing, but it's it's a person. And he came down in the person of Christ. So when I'm living in accord with wisdom, I'm, I am fearing God. I'm, I'm living in accord mm -hmm. with the way he ruled the world. When you think of wisdom, you, you said you, you went through like the materialist phase and you kind of helped yourself out of that. Oh, wh where are you at now, man? Is there is there like a logos? Is there a principle when you're being wise that you're living in accord with? Or is it God? Is it a deist God? Like wh wh where are yeah. you at right now? Yeah. So I've I've kind of doubled down, I guess, on some of like the earlier um, mystical stuff mm. um, and like things that kind of seem just like cute thoughts but like didn't make any sense to me back in the day like like spinoza's kind of like substance like like monism like yeah i feel like i've kind of gotten to the point of like all right like peeling off of every sort of like distinction and like um hmm. you know uh individual self or um personality or um yeah like separation and just kind of getting into you know some kind of like you know whatever universe or universes there are perhaps that is what um is god you know mm. and then uh well then it's like well that doesn't really have any explanatory value it's just like <laughs> it doesn't add anything like to my understanding of the world but it's kind of like a uh artistic feeling in a sense of like a way to look at the world mm. um where um yeah it's like you know this entire thing is just like mind-blowing and magical and it's beautiful yeah. um it doesn't make any sense i can't really wrap my head around any of it and i'm you know just like a blip of you know electrons or mm. you know spirit or who knows what um and like what are what is the difference between like me and my you know 
uh, personality, which I may have been born with, and you know, what is the relation between free will and determinism, and yeah. yada yada yada, all that stuff. Um, yeah. Kind of um, just sort of like mel- merging everything together, and then you know, breaking it back apart again, and then seeing the distinctions again, and kind of like uh, seeing the beauty in like a bird or a, any mm. person um, or a you know whatever, right? Like a piece of lint like whatever it's all the same it's all magical it's all beautiful it's all whatever um so yeah kind of flirting into the like uh all is one kind of vibe okay. but then also like uh re-entering the world of you know the senses and um all of that yeah and, and then trying to like you know bring kindness to people like maybe that's that's the best you can do is yeah i can get down with some kindness man that's good that's good stuff yeah. and um yeah I, I we could we could have a whole podcast just on on that stuff but um man i'm i'm, I'm grateful for what you do i'm grateful that you uh are including me in it man it's, it's yeah really really fun and really cool um so after you said all this beautiful stuff let's get back to to commodifying uh, <laughs> right yeah so that we can get that private jet the, the that's dude, right dude and we can jet. yeah we, we can look out the window and then we can contemplate from our own you know it's a lot nicer private like a five-star hotel yeah right right or you build that that desert sauna house uh, out yeah. there and we can contemplate life um so i just wanted to finish like uh, i'm not sure how it how it looks right now but um by the time this episode comes out we're gonna have a link in the description um so they can give they can have like a 30-day trial of, of parker's pensy's playlist or Parker's mm-hmm. Proverbs. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you sign up, enter your phone number, um, and then you have to like enter your card info, but you, you won't be charged. It's a free trial. And then okay. it's easy to unsubscribe. You just reply back, unsubscribe to the text oh, message. Oh, man, you made it so easy. You usually just yeah. trick, trick them into getting that for first month or whatever afterwards. No, yeah. no. That's trying good. to avoid, the, you know. <laughs> That's good. Um, yeah, we so... Could- we could pitch get- it as a as a wisdom lesson. You guys should have been more wise about this, but surprise, you get your card. <laughs> Don't yeah, like, yeah, that's like good. Uh, the movie Cocktail with Brad Pitt or with uh, Tom Cruise, really. It's fun. Oh, yeah. it teaches him the hard lessons. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, so you sign up, you'll get your first text message right after signing up. And then every day you get one. Um, you can change the time of day and um, easy to unsubscribe um, or to keep going. And um, that's awesome. So, um, I actually don't, I don't remember if we talked about this or not, but, um, if they, if they, uh, if they do Parker's Pensies, po- like a uh, playlist, whatever, and they want to switch over, uh, is that, are they able to do that or do they need to buy another? Um, yeah, you could do that. So, um, like all you would have to do is reply back, like add Epicurus and then oh, you'd sweet. be getting Parker and Epicurus. Um, wow. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That's a value. That's huge. Um, that that's so cool. I so I have it pulled up right now, and I just saved the the daily wisdom text number to daily wisdom. So so now it's not just yeah. a random number because that's really frustrating when you get random numbers. So now it just says daily wisdom, and I'll get these messages. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to share one from Dune um, that I really really love, and they've they've snuck it into a lot of different sci fi uh, shows and stuff. And it's I don't know if it's an illusion or if they just totally ripped off. Frank Herbert, like sometimes they they say it's an allusion to him, but it's like no, you you didn't quote, you didn't cite him at all. You just ripped off his. Yeah, stuff. but everyone's just ripping everyone off. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so so in in Dune, uh, in the book, it says uh, there's this Reverend Mother, and she's like uh, she's like a witch. So sorry, Christian listeners, but um, the the witches are like really like wise women, and they're they're not using spells and stuff like that. But um, that's that's what they are in the book. So uh, Frank Herbert, in order to make them seem really wise and stuff actually makes all these like gnomic statements and wisdom kind of like Tolkien does with Gandalf and get in, in Gandalf's mouth are all these orig- like maybe not original, but really profound, amazing proverbs. So I grabbed one and, it, and I got the daily wisdom text of it. And I wanted to share it as we close here. So the Reverend mother is talking to Paul Atreides right after he puts his hand in the box of pain and he, she's got the gom jabber up to his, his uh, neck and she says, you've heard of animals chewing off a leg to escape a trap. There's an animal kind of trick. A human would remain in the trap, endure the pain, feigning death that he might kill the trapper and remove a threat to his kind. And I thought, man, like, it's not it's not like a, uh, a proverb in the sense of like 
proverbs proverbs but it's something to chew on and think about like it's just from a book but it actually it actually makes sense like I don't want to chew off my hand. I whoever is trapping humans, I'm waiting for him and I'm going to take yeah. him away. I'm going to remove this threat from my species. And it's just like this really cool epic thing mm -hmm. to be pondering on. Like what what situation would I be in where I would instead of looking out for number 1, saying no, I'm going to overcome this whole threat and no one else is going to have to deal with this because I'm Yeah. Here. I and love she it. says it she says like this is a human thing, but then you have to think like there are animals and insects and whatnot that are yeah. also um willing to make those sacrifices and, yeah um yeah just w w to ramble one more on just i i love that the uh there's the the um what are the sorry i was actually just confusing it with hellraiser where they're the kenobites and okay. just getting into the desert father thing yeah, um, yeah. wrong reference um, no worries what do they call the the witches oh uh She's a reverend mother, but I forgot. I forgot the uh, the, the kind of they are. True. Yeah, I can't think of it right now. Yeah, is that important? Do you need that for the? No, not important. Okay. Just yeah. So... <laughs> yeah. Did, did you have another reference for us? Do you have another quote? Oh uh, no, I. Was... Oh, I thought you were about to drop one on us. No, I was, no, like, I was oh, confused and was thinking that that group was called the Kenobites, but then I realized that's hell. That's Hellraiser. Because oh, that okay, would refer okay. back to the Desert Fathers thing. So gotcha, you, gotcha, you, gotcha. Nice. Okay. Yeah. yeah Coherent yeah. way to end the episode. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll cut that out. That's okay. good, man. Well, um, it's thanks thanks again for thanks for coming on the podcast for sharing your story, man, and getting kind of vulnerable with this. That was really cool. And yeah. uh it was just so cool to see that philosophy does matter and mm -hmm. um it, it, it is helpful for living the good life, uh, or a good life. And being, being a part of this is really cool. So I'm excited for more people to jump in. I hope that like the rising tide lifts all shit, man. I hope that yeah. you and I both are, are talking next time on our own private jets because <laughs> this is done so well. No, but I, I hope this will, um, I know this will serve people well, even if it's just for that 30-day uh, free trial, you get to to get a yeah. bunch of my favorite quotes uh, deep in your, in your head and your heart. Yeah. Uh, Samuel, anything to, to end us on? Um, no, this is awesome. Um, yeah. And uh, love love your podcast. I love getting Thanks, into like the the um, you know hardcore analytic mm -hmm. philosophy stuff. But then you also have guests on um, that are scratching other itches. And so uh, yeah, it's amazing what you're doing, bringing um, wisdom to the world as well. Thanks, thanks, man. I, I wasn't trying to like uh, uh, search for that, but I appreciate. It. Thanks, dude. I hope that people don't think I was like, er, give me some more praise. That's awesome. I no. really appreciate it. Um, all right, so folks, you can find the link in the description. Uh, to Daily Wisdom Text, uh, please sign up and, and check that out. Uh, you got a 30-day 30, 30 free trial. Go find that. And uh, check out the other ones, too, because there, there's going to be, ho hopefully more, there's going to be even more and more and more playlists as time goes on. Uh, maybe we won't call them playlists, but uh, that's up to yeah, Samuel to decide. Yeah. All right, that's going to have to do it for us, folks. This has been Parker's Pensies, and as always, all glory to God.